I am concerned. Purdue football is currently 2-4, and, and they could honestly be 0-6 right now if things didn't go their way. They've played worse every single week so far. Bob Diaco was the worst hire of any coordinator in college football this year. Jeff Brom seems to be losing his touch. He's the 7th highest paid coach in college football. And Purdue should not be 2-4 and four in the Big Ten West with the kind of teams that are over there. There's not a whole lot of passion with Purdue football right now. I feel like we're wasting Rondell Moore, David Bell, and George Karloff. This defense has been terrible. We practically had the easiest schedule in the Big Ten. And I mean, going into the year, I thought we would finish second or third behind Minnesota and Wisconsin. But right now, Purdue looks terrible. Purdue football is not looking good right now. The defense needs to improve in every single facet. They're not making tackles. They're not playing with passion. They're not getting big third down stops. And they're letting teams that have had bad offenses this year control the game. Rondale Moore started this whole thing, and I started to become concerned when he decided to sit out. He opted out of the season, ended up coming back a few weeks later, but he didn't play his first two games. Some people say it's injury. I don't know. I really don't know what to say about that. I think it was something with the culture. Maybe they're trying to rush him back. Maybe there was something going on behind the scenes. Aiden O'Connell and Jack Plummer and Austin Burton were supposed to be the three guys to battle out of the quarterback position, and I liked Aiden O'Connell the best personally, after he really looked good last year at times, despite Purdue having a bad record, and I thought O'Connell was going to be the answer. He didn't look amazing against Iowa. He made some big plays, but he didn't make some good reads. He had some mistakes, but Purdue's defense bailed him out at the end, and they had a comeback win. David Bell had a touchdown late in the game, and Purdue won. So, they beat Iowa, who's a respectable team, and who looks pretty good right now. So I was like, okay, Purdue football, you're doing good. They got off to a hot start against Illinois. In the first half, they looked dominant on offense. And Illinois was playing with their fourth-string quarterback after Brandon Peters went out. Isaiah Williams wasn't able to play. And then the third-string dude got injured. So they were playing with a fourth-string guy. Illinois football does not have the same amount of talent as Purdue and definitely doesn't have as good of a coach. But Illinois hung around and made a comeback and had a chance to win. But they ended up not capitalizing. Purdue converted a late third down, and they barely beat Illinois. This is when I start to get concerned. There's no reason why Purdue should have let Illinois hang around for that long. It's ridiculous. They were a better team, they had so much more talent, there's no reason you should be letting the fourth string quarterback who's never played a snap almost beat you. Purdue was 2-0 though, so I was alright with that, and then Wisconsin got cancelled. That was by far the toughest game on Purdue's schedule. The Boilermakers have not been able to beat them over the past few years, and I had a big sigh of relief, because I was like, maybe Purdue can actually go 7-0. The best team is gone, they've had their way with Indiana, at least for the last few years, and I thought Purdue could really win the West at this point. And then the Northwestern game happened. Northwestern kind of came out of nowhere, Purdue looked flat, they couldn't capitalize, Aiden O'Connell wasn't playing that good, and Northwestern just beat him on both sides of the ball. 2-1, and one, okay. You still have a chance, the schedule was easy coming up, they had a chance. Rondale Moore returned for the Minnesota game. Minnesota was coming off getting killed by Michigan, they lost to another team, they did not look good, Minnesota was not living up to the hype. And they came out with almost 30 guys out due to COVID. And they came on the field and dominated Purdue on offense. Purdue's defense looked horrible. They could not get off the field on third down. They were so undisciplined with penalties. They looked terrible. Jack Plummer had the game of his life at quarterback, in my opinion, his best game in a Purdue uniform, as O'Connell was then listed out. They ended up making a comeback, and Payne Durham catches a touchdown pass in the back of the end zone. Easy call, good touchdown. Flag thrown, offensive pass interference, for a tiny push out of the hand about 10 yards prior. One of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. And if you don't believe me, college game they said the next day that that was one of the worst calls they've ever seen ever. Like, it was not a pass interference call. The ref apparently had ties to, to Minnesota. I don't know, I can't confirm that, but I, I read that somewhere. Horrible, horrible call. The very next play, Purdue throws a pick and loses. They make that play, they're three and one. That right there is what killed this season. They weren't looking too good, but they had a chance to be 3-1, and one, and that was just the end of it. That deflated them. They're 2-2, two and two, and then they had the next week against Rutgers, a game they probably thought they were going to win. They started out all right, and then the defense absolutely collapsed in the second half. The third-string quarterback for Rutgers came in and ran all over them. Rutgers took the lead. Purdue could not score. And every single play, Rutgers would either hand it off or the quarterback would do an option keep. And every single play, he would get four or five yards. And Rutgers just said, stop us. They did the same exact play. Everyone in the building, everyone in the stadium knew what they were going to do. Said, stop us. They couldn't stop them. Rutgers won the game. Two and three, lost to Rutgers. There's no reason for that. Then you have Nebraska. They've been dysfunctional under Scott Frost. They've had a lot of crap this year. Nebraska football is not that good. Purdue's at home, and they give up 14 points in the first five minutes. They have a blocked punt that practically goes for a touchdown. Defense did absolutely nothing. They are flat the entire game, Purdue couldn't score at the end, Purdue couldn't make a stop, and Nebraska won. Two and four. 
Wisconsin game was canceled. Indiana Oaken Bucket game was canceled this past weekend. Purdue went 2 and 4 this year when they had the easiest schedule in the Big Ten. It's ridiculous. They've been pathetic this year. Purdue football, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. There's something going on with the culture. Jeff Brom used to throw chairs. He used to have fiery post game speeches. He'd have great locker room speeches. It's all gone. The fun energy that Purdue football used to have is gone. Something's going on in the locker room. Something's going on with the culture. And for some reason, Purdue football's fallen off. Bob Yucca was a terrible hire on the defensive side of the ball. And I just don't know what's going on. They definitely won't make a bowl game, and they don't deserve to make a bowl game. This is now year two of no bowl for Purdue. Jeff Brom has seemingly lost his touch a little bit. I don't want him fired yet. He's the seventh highest paid coach. He has shown flash at times, but the play calling's been super boring this year. He needs to recruit better. Their class is ranked 14th in the Big Ten right now, which is absolutely ridiculous. Purdue football's falling off, and it's very dangerous right now, and I'm very concerned. His recruiting classes have not produced, and one last thing I'm going to say about Purdue is, I have a theory for why this is happening. Daryl Hazel was one of the worst hires in the history of college football. Purdue football was as bad as Rutgers or as bad as Vanderbilt for a while. And those players that Brom inherited back in 2017, a lot of those upperclassmen kids, they were under-recruited, they were lightly recruited, they had chips on their shoulders, they were called losers, they were called kids that didn't belong in the Big Ten. They had a chip on their shoulder, and when Brom put in a new system, added some fun and swag to the offense, and just made Purdue football a little bit cooler, they played their hearts out. They played so hard, and that defense was spectacular his first year. The offense needed some work, but Brom was an offensive guy. The defense played spectacular, all those upperclassmen played spectacular, and that translated into the 2018 season when they beat Ohio State, they beat Boston College, they beat Iowa, they beat Indiana, they beat teams, and they were competitive in every single game they played that year. And they prided themselves on outworking and outplaying the opponent, which is what they did. But these new guys who have come in, I think they're more used to success. They're the next wave of Purdue guys. They no longer have a chip on their shoulder. They're expecting to come in and win. I think it's a tough reality check because Purdue is not at the point where they can just have guys come in and they can win a ton of games. And Jeff Brom's going to get that figured out. He's got to get the attitudes adjusted. And he's got to figure out what's going on or he's going to be out of a job pretty soon. I don't think Purdue will fire him because the Brahms run West Lafayette right now. Athletic director Mike Babinski has a lot of faith in him, and he has done well recruiting-wise, and he has shown some flash, but he's got to fire Bob Diaco. He's got to find a defensive coordinator that can make this defense somewhat bearable to watch. They need a new strength and conditioning coach because players get injured all the time. They have no transparency with injuries and why players sit out. It's just kind of ridiculous. Purdue needs to hit the reset button this offseason and figure some things out, or Jeff Brom's going to be out of a job, and Purdue's going to be rebuilding again. Oh.